This is Down Home Sports, covering the best sports and student athletes in Ellis County. Brought to you by Pinnacle Bank with ATM Live, powered by the people. Not just another bank in Texas, but Texas in a bank. The United States Marine Corps, the fighting spirit of an entire nation. Doe City Pizza and Burgers. For the best in artisan pizza and burgers, go to Doe City in Red Oak, Texas, across from the high school. It is delicious. With today's busy schedules, we need flexibility. Pinnacle Bank is the way banking should be. With ATM Live, powered by the people. They have hours that make it easy. Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. You can just pull up to one of the easy to access ATMs. Where there's always someone live friendly, and knowledgeable to help you. Pinnacle Bank, not just another bank in Texas, but Texas in a bank. Member FDIC. What, well, folks, we're here with the greatness, which is Coach Gober from the Waxhatchee Indian Bat men's basketball team and coach, you know, early season, you know, working out some things with your team. You kind of had a, a little bit heavier side, started on rotation on the senior side last year. What are some of the good things that you're seeing so so far so early? Well, the, the really good thing is, you know, we're actually starting to continue to play hard and trying to learn and how to play together. We, we're trying to replace 10 different kids and and those kids all come from different places. You know, they might be our JV, they might be move-ins, they might be off of a freshman team or eighth grade team. So uh, a lot of, you know, we need some, a lot of cohesiveness right now is really what we got to work on. Gotcha. And, you know, Z, I mean, I, I think he's one of the most underrated players on the team from last year, me personally. And I just see him expanding his game some this year. Just talk about him for a second and what he means to the team this year. Man, he means everything. He's uh, he's really turned into a overall player. You know, he was a complimentary piece last year, and now he really – he's got to do a lot for us. And, uh, you know, he's been doing it um, against McKinney. He had 20-plus points. And in my opinion, in the opinion of several college guys, he was the best player on the court that night, and they've got five-star athletes. And so uh, five-star recruits. And then, you know, he, he's just doing well. And then uh, against Lancaster on Friday night, I thought he was a leading scorer. He had uh, 25 um, and we have somebody a little bit higher, but, but man, he did everything. He defends, he, he, uh, you know, makes sure he facilitates the offense, but he can score as well. Well, you know, like I said, last year, you know, you you mentioned he's a complimentary piece and, you know, I just think that that's young man that's going to have, if you, I'm going to say this to everybody out there. If you ain't watching that kid, you don't know what you're missing. Okay. Yeah. Let's get that straight. Uh, I totally I'm, agree. Totally agree. You know, I, I think he ought to be going somewhere pretty soon, man. Somebody ought to be looking at him. But, I mean, that Lancaster game was one for the ages right there. That was one heck of a basketball game, folks. 81-76 win. Huh? It was crazy. It was fun. It was <laughs> really- well, I mean, but I, I think this yeah. is – is this the kind of – not necessarily the kind of score. I mean, you want to win – as about many as you can, but y'all had 41 rebounds in the game, I do believe, 15 assists on the night, and you're going back to this, the same formula. I mean, it's steal the ball, take off, run a good play, get down and take a high percent shot, you know? Well, hopefully that's what we're trying to do. It's, yeah. You know, it's it's up and down and – the good thing is the big guys that we have, we got 6'10", 6'9", 6'6", but they they can all run and they like to run and they're, they're getting used to uh, the conditioning factor because they, they both play a ton and then as well as the guards, you know, they, they really, uh, you know, we're not running as, as well as we have in the past, but we are definitely improving every game. Well, and I think one of the things I've noticed so far is, you know, your big guys that are down there, they're having good – from what I've been able to see thus far, a lot of really good footwork down 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 that line. Yeah, they're you know the, here's the crazy thing about it: they're big guys, but they're just not low post players with the back. Yeah. 
constantly. They, they've got a shoot perimeter. They've got a guard perimeter. They, they become basketball players, and that, that's really starting to show. They're, they're, you know, Parker's got a tremendous uh, basketball IQ, and he's just so young. You know, I, I say this all the time. He turned 15 like a month ago. So he was, he's been 14 playing against 19, you know, old men, basically. Yeah. And, uh, but, yeah, they're getting better every day. Awesome. Well, Coach, talk about the leadership on your team right now and how they're making an impact on these new players. Uh, you know, it's, it's tough because, like we said at the beginning, Z is supposed to be a leader because he's returning. Prince yeah. is the only other returner. And then he fractures uh, his leg again, the same fracture. And so those were my two biggest leaders as far as the most playing time. And then Jordan Davis, uh, you know, he he has more experience than anyone on the team. But being a leader doesn't just happen naturally just because you've been on the team a while. It's uh, it's something you got to live yourself. You got to come every day. And then the, the other players definitely earn the respect. And then, you know, you, you get their respect at the same time, you know, it, it's just turning into something real positive. It's a constant growth. And, you know, one minute, you know, Z may be the leader. It might be Prince on the bench. It could be Jordan, but it also could be Parker. You know, Parker did something really good uh, in the Lancaster game and spoke up and, uh, you know, really had a great idea, you know, and he, he's, he's, these kids, here's the best thing about it, the leadership part of it as well. They don't mind you getting on them. Uh, they, don't, they don't mind you telling them the exact truth, what they're doing, when they're doing it, because they know that's the only way we're going to get better. And uh, they, they, they really, it's, it's fun, and they embrace it. That, that's what I look forward to every day. Well, and, you know, one of the things you had, you know, you have a CJ that CJ just took the reins and ran with it pretty much. Um, you know, is it that these kids need to just step up and just grab a hold of the reins of that leadership position on their own instead of just, you know, somebody telling them, oh, hey, you're a leader. Is that kind of a fine line as a coach right there? Yeah, to me, you know, some people look at it a lot different. You know, I don't, I don't think that our way is just the only way because there's a lot of different ways, but we never have captains. I, I haven't had a captain in six years that I've been there. Um, you know, I think the captain is the guy that the kids follow, not somebody you tell who they're supposed to follow. And uh, that, that's what we end up doing. I, I want to, it's not by osmosis because it's, it, it's, it's something deliberate and something that we're constantly working on, but uh, they know who the leaders are. And uh, like we said, they- everybody's, everybody wants to be the chief until it's time to be the chief. You know, a- Amen. Uh, Heavy as the crown. Yeah. We have to be just a bunch of Indians and every now and then the chief's going to speak. So you know, that's, that's what we do. That's awesome. Well, Coach, you know, you got a couple games underneath your belt right now. Who's that one kid that you're thinking, okay, I mean, even if there's more probably, hopefully, is there just that one or two kids that are rising above what your expectation was even starting the season thus far? Man, I'll tell you, we, we've got some that has blown my mind. We, uh, we had 11 kids on the board that couldn't play because of injuries. Uh, UIL didn't allow him to play, um, and, you know, whatever it may be. But there's 11 of them, transfer, different things like that. And uh, so we, we've just been pulling kids up left and right off the JV. Football came. We, we sued the kids up the day after they got, you know, beat in the playoffs. They, uh, they were on the court playing. And so a kid named Donovan Suggs, we just put him in there because he's been with us. He ends up playing 20 minutes against McKinney and – or 20 minutes against uh, – uh, Louisville and really did an unbelievable job. And I didn't think we played 20 seconds, but we played 20 minutes. And then, you know, last night against um, Lancaster Friday night, what happened was Jalen, you know, Jalen Becks, we're, <laughs> we're, we're ready for Jaden, you know, to just kind of get his feet underneath him. And we, you know, we decided, well, let's put him in. We put him in and he's a great defender. He's tough. He's physical, but then he hit three out of four threes and, was guarding the best player on the floor for them. So uh, they they exceed my expectations every day. Somebody steps up. That's a hey. – well, Coach, does that not make – as a coach, does that not make you, like, just super proud that these these kids that are Indians through and through come up, hit that court, and 
make that transition immediately with limited minutes before that. I mean, how much, how much does that just fill your heart about these young men being able to do that kind of thing? It really it is so um, rewarding. I, I mean, it's unbelievable to see the story like Jaden Bex. Jaden Bex basically quit as a freshman. You know, some different things happened. We allowed him to come back. He, he just becomes so uh, disciplined and we can count on him and you see him change. And uh, same thing with Donovan, but every player, you know, Jordan Davis has the most experience and he's struggling and he was going through an injury and, you know, he was kind of contemplating a few little negative things and all of a sudden he just decided, you know, I'm going to stick with it. So I think it's growth. I think it, it, it's just so important that they continue to grow. And then, the kids that we have, I, I've never, in six years, I'm so excited about the kids because the young kids are bought in and they're they're just on cloud nine. They they were celebrating with us or sitting on the bench, you know, behind the bench. Uh, and then they just love the game. They love to compete and they love to win. That's that's really what's important. Well, and, you know, one of the things I've been kind of talking about this year with even football and everybody else is the importance of those junior high coaches getting them ready for your program, your style of ball. You know, talk about your junior high coaches and how they're impacting the program as a whole. Well, we're really fortunate, you know, in the last couple of years kind of made some changes in the way that it's kind of, you know, organized at walks at you. But there's a lead basketball coach at each of the three junior highs, and they do basketball and track and cross country. They do the multiple sports, but they don't necessarily do football for the kids that, that, uh, you know, may have decided they didn't want to play football or they, you know, they never played. And uh, in the past, they were just kind of stuck in limbo for multiple years until it was time to play. And they were so far behind, it it really stagnated the entire growth, to be honest with you. I think, uh, you know, the fruits are starting to really show themselves with these young kids because the three guys that we have, you know, they – one of them has moved up already with me on the freshman, and he does a tremendous job, Quentin Cannon. But uh, Brendan Glenn, and you know, we, we have uh, Coach Hache at Coleman, and then you know, just to, to make sure over at, at Howard, Austin Combs is a uh, walks at you player, and he does a tremendous job. So those three guys, you know, they work everybody, they do multi purpose type workouts. It's not just dribbling and shooting all the time, they're, they're, they're lifting, they're conditioning, and they don't necessarily run exactly everything we do. I've never been one of those people who say, you know, because you got to run what what you have, what's good for you. The the over, you know, last year at Howard, they had um, Parker. Well, they don't have Parker now, so it's a different deal. They're all guards again, so they have to do a lot of different things, and that that's what we're seeing. It's just we're trying to develop basketball players, period, and not just position type people. Well, uh, and you know, I mean. You started, you know, the Indians, you know, we talked about this last year, filling that gym back up the way it used to be, you know, back in the day. You know, how important would that be? I mean, we saw in the playoffs and everything last year. How important is that to a team just from a mental standpoint to, you know, have their fellow students there, have those friends and family in those stands to get them through those rough times when maybe they're, you know, their stroke is off a little bit. They're a little bit wobsided, but does that not help motivate and just show the love of the program throughout the community? It does. It's, it's a tremendous uh, asset for us and the kids. They, they understand because they go to other places and they see their home crowd. And then, you know, when we're on the road, sometimes we'll have more people on the road than, than the team that we're playing. So, when we do get a home game, and this year we only have two home games outside of district. Yeah. And the, the crazy thing is I constantly tell them, you know, look up in the stands because your, your parents may be there, a relative may be there, but who are all those other people? And those are people from 35, 40 years, and they just come back and think it's their team, and they, you know, they're excited like in the older days about this is our team, this is our town, this is our community. Honestly, that doesn't happen everywhere. And uh, especially on the 6 day level, it just doesn't happen. And uh, I think we're real fortunate. And as long as we represent ourselves the right way, we compete, we play in a manner that's pleasing to everybody. You know, they don't have to agree with what we do, but they see how hard they play. 
And uh, it's a lot of fun. It, it definitely is a, a benefit and an advantage for us to have those guys, people at the games. Well, and coach, you know, um, I, 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 I love watching you on the, on the, on the sidelines. Okay. Uh, there's, there's, you can start to see every emotion known to man within a basketball game with you. But one of the biggest things to me is even as tight as some of these games are, you always take the time. I, at least, at least two times a game, I see you with your arm around a kid talking to them individually. And whether that or not, that's to calm their nerves or just give them pointers. The way that you handle things, I think is amazing in and of itself. But I mean, is it, and I, I, I know you well enough to say, you talk on so many different levels, these kids, you can reach them in a different ways, which has impressed me greatly. But I love it. You know, what you're talking about, I'm glad you noticed. Uh, I see in today's world and, and maybe even when I was co uh, playing, you know, in the 80s, it was still happening. But I, I found and I, I saw this study one time when the Mavericks won the final, you know, when they won the championship, they counted how many times somebody fist bumped and how many times they touched the warm ups. So we make sure we touch every kid in warm ups and I make sure that they touch each other. When I was coaching Cade Cunningham, I'd say Cade's name probably 50 times in warm ups. And I say, Cade, go touch him. Or Cade, get him. And it was just weird how that's evolved. And sometimes when I put my arm around him, we're saying things that we can't say, you know, all the time. Sometimes we're just saying, you know, man, I love you. What, what's going on? Yeah. I, I just, you know, what it is, is it, uh, it personalizes and it humanizes. That's what this is. I tell them all the time that, you know, I'm going to get excited and I go crazy. And sometimes I act the wrong way. And I said, but you know, I make mistakes. I know you make mistakes. And, and that's why by touching them, it makes a big difference. We said uh, just the other day, I, I know COVID is so real and it, it's so crazy. But what it did was it dehumanized things. You couldn't touch people. We had to stay away from each other. Even at practice, we we wouldn't huddle up and, you know, when we say stuff, we wouldn't touch their hands. And so I just kind of said, you know, hey, we, we got to go for it. Let's make sure we're all vaccinated do it as much as possible. And we're, we're going to touch each other again. And it, it helps us. It really does. Well, I know it's only been, you know, a little bit of time on the buses. But, you know, last year we had all the rules about separation and everything else. Does it not just make it better for the players to be able to grab that ox cord or whatever, and just you be together and share yeah. the – because, I mean, not everybody's going to go play at the next level all the time. And, you know, those high school memories, you can talk to pros, and the pros will tell you about their time in high school. A lot of times more than they'll tell you about college. But It's crazy, yeah. that The, the, the amount of time that they spend together in high school is incredible. I mean uh, – you know, we, we work out multiple times a day. We're on the bus together. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll start at nine in the morning and we won't get home till probably 11 o'clock and we'll be together the entire time. So there, there is a tremendous bond. And, and when they can sing together, talk together, hang out and, you know, not isolate so much, it, it helps. And that's what I keep telling people. We need a time. We need an opportunity to play games and, you know, just to be together so we can depend on each other. So it's awesome. it, it, huge this year. Well, I tell you what, is, is, did they play any music for you? Do you know all the words of these things? <laughs> Man, they, I, I let them listen to music some, in practice a lot. And then sometimes I'll play my music and they can't stand it. But they, act like, <laughs> they act like they kind of like it. So uh, I'll let them listen to theirs. But yeah, I, I've heard I've heard some crazy stuff. Believe me. And, uh, oh, I imagine. I imagine. Well, it's, Coach, it's, thank you. It's crazy. Well, I got to ask you, Thanksgiving coming up, you know, going to be able to spend some time with your family, hopefully. What's that one dessert that you're waiting for on Thanksgiving Day? Man, I ain't going to lie. I love pumpkin pie, but I, I eat pecan pie. I, I'll eat the whole pie. Uh, and so I, I love pecan pie. I love Thanksgiving. I, you know, it's a, it's a tremendous time. So I – Definitely, you better do some serious working out because you're going to average. I think they said you average like five to seven pounds. You gain weight. Yeah. Christmas, so I'm in a lot of trouble. I'm in a lot of trouble right now. I've been in a lot of trouble for a long time, man. What you talking about? 
Okay. Well, yeah. folks, let me tell you, this team is already more than a team. It's a family. Coach Gober, I just want to appreciate you for your heart and everything on the court, off the court, the whole nine yards. Uh, I know Waxhatchee's blessed to have you. The county's blessed to have you as a coach representing our county as well. And uh, we hope you nothing but more than great things for this season and just keep them going, okay? Hey, I tell you, Terry, thank you so much for what you do for people. But you said something that's so just unbelievably true. If you can make somebody a family, if your team becomes and they think that it's a family, you're, you're, you're a winner. It doesn't matter if you won the game or not, if you've accomplished that. And that's that goes from every assistant coach we have, from every administrator, from, you know, from the teachers. We, we think we're a family. We, we do. And, you know, families fight each other. Families get upset. Families argue. But when it's time to protect each other, they definitely protect each other. And that's that's what we're trying to do. And I just hope we can continue to do that. Do you know the difference? Well, the best benefit in having true benefits is the fact that they're easy. You can get a hold of them. It's not two days later, a week later, I can make a phone call. If they don't have the answer, they'll get us the answer within 24 hours. He came to the office and interviewed all of our girls and did a presentation, told them what they were offering, and the girls were able to decide what they needed. They came in and gave us options, both for our company and our employees that were affordable and beneficial for all. No matter the size of your business or your employees' needs, True Texas Benefits is the partner for you. Because Ellis County knows the difference. True Texas Benefits for all your benefits needs. Guess what, Ellis County? It's the winning team right here. Italy football coming at you live and proud. We got Coach Brown. We got Coach Cruz. Coach Moore. Guys, let's just – I want to start off with this one because everybody talks about the points that y'all put up this weekend. That's going to be a big highlight of it. My deal is y'all and Lindsay are the only two teams to hold them for less than 35 points on the year. I don't know who wants to take this one, but, you know, everybody loves to talk about the offense – Y'all, special teams and defense has been doing an exemplary job the whole season. I mean, who would Coach like to take that one? Because, DC. huh? I said Coach Cruz is DC. Cruz DT, so that. there we go, Cruz. Yeah, uh, Coach Horn says it best. I mean, he says it. Uh, he says it every week. If they don't score, they can't win. And uh, we knew that Albert had some playmakers, and um, we knew that uh, we had to. We 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 had to get that. The, the, those guys taken care of and uh, they got us early on and um, we made some minor adjustments and uh, at the end of the day, you know, we our guys did a good job of uh, minimizing the mistakes in the second half and, uh, you know, we just, we took care of biz business, but every day we, uh, you know, we, 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 we let them know, hey guys, they, they don't score, they can't win and we come out every day and we, uh, we focus on defense and we, um, you know, we we put our guys in the best situation to be successful defensively and get get the offense the ball. Well, Coach Coach Moore, I mean, I, I'm not no, not sure if my numbers are right because it's hard to keep up with everything. But I've got four plus plays of over 32 yards for scores, and I mean, just talk about that from the offensive side. Well, uh, the biggest thing for us is we want to we want to pound the ball and you know and. Uh, because most guys, you know, two-way starters, so we want to wear them down. So it's easier for Cruz and his defense to, you know, take advantage of that. And, then, of course, on the flip side for us as well, they want to, you know, put pressure on their guys. But for us, man, we got some playmakers, man. And when they hit that seam and it opens up, it goes. I mean, you got Garrett Wood running back. You got uh, Tootie, you know, who can play the outside receiver, also uh, get some spills of running back. And, of course, you know, Dredrick, I mean, that dude's just a 70-yard oh. playmaker. He does get the ball. So, I mean, it's just one of those things It's you know, they know we spread the ball out. So, it's just a matter of time of when we're going to hit that big play. And then we just, you know, at that point, it's about, all right, we want to play the clock down. We got our points and we want to get out of here in one piece. Uh, but that's something our kids take pride in. They know it's, it's you know, it's not a bang or bust offense. We're either going to lull you to sleep and bang one deep or we're going to keep pounding on you and pounding on you. We're not trying to do anything too extravagant. We're just going to give you what we, you know, we see and, uh, take advantage of it and last night or Friday night 
Uh, we had, you know, four or five plays that were huge, you know, us taking advantage of what we were seeing. Well, Coach Brown, you know, the one, the one thread I see through all the sports in Italy is the basic theme of do your job and do it right and be yes, hard-nosed we, about you know, what you're doing. We, we, we preach to them, you know, the weight room's important and, and they get after it in there and, you know, and, and basically our rules are, you know, be tougher longer and, and, and play faster. I mean, and, and if you do that, a lot of things, you know, take care of themselves. Everybody's going to have positive and negative plays for and against them in the course of a game. And, and uh, we try to teach them not to dwell on it, that good stuff's going to happen for them at times too. And you gotta, you gotta just come right back and, and get back after it, you know, so. Hey, man. Well, Coach Cruz, I mean, you got a couple of turnovers from your defense as well. Set you up in great field position. Just talk about, I mean, these guys are bringing the, bringing the wood right now, and they're hammering people when they hit them on the defensive side of the ball. Just talk about that mentality from your defense alone. Yes, sir. Uh, we preach play fast. Like Coach Brown said, play fast, play fast, play fast. Um, and and we, we, we teach executing assignments. Um, you know, Mondays are always big learning days, Tuesdays, um, you know, we're, we're, we're getting, we're sharpening our knives and, um, you know, we're, we're getting the twos in and by Wednesday, um, we're putting the hay in the barn and, uh, again, playing fast, you know, at all three levels up front with the D line, we're playing fast. We're, uh, you know, executing our, our assignments, um, linebackers, you know, making sure we know where our reads are, making sure we're calling out formations, alignments, you know, um, and then picking out those tendencies that we see that, that, that the coaching staff that, that we all see on Saturdays and Sundays. And, you know, we try to echo all that to our guys and our guys do a good job of, um, you know, asking questions early on in the week. Hey, what did they do this? Or, Hey coach, I'm not understanding this. Um, and by, by Friday night, you know, uh, they, they always come off. The good thing is, you know, we, we have we, do, we have a lot of guys that, you know, just play on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, we're blessed to do that. And, you know, when they get off the field and they come talk to me, they're able to echo what they see. And um, we're able to do minor adjustments if we need to. Um, but at the end of the day, the, the, the message is clear. It's play fast, um, you know, secure tackles. Um, and, and we're not very big, so so – we know where we're weak and where we're strong, and uh, we rally to the ball, uh, and and that that that's worked for us. That formula has worked for us so far. Well, Coach Moore, I'm going to get back over to offense, okay? But you mentioned a lot of those skill players. I think your offensive line needs to get a lot of love. Uh, <laughs> those guys, I'm just going to tell you, most teams that run the ball as much as y'all do are wo woeful on pass protection. And those pockets the other night were pretty darn crisp. And they've done that all season long. Not going to just say they did it one game. But it takes a special kind of lineman that can run block and pass ball. You don't see too many of them down at, down at that level that execute so well on both sides. Yeah, that's – I mean, I, I got to credit that to the kids, man. Uh, they bought in, you know, I'm – the new guy on the block and, uh, you know, I do things a little bit different than guys in the past they've had. And that's one thing when we have our weekly dinners, you know, that's one thing they said, you know, I mean, I wish we would have had you, you know, like those seniors, I wish we had had you the whole year or the whole, my whole career, just because of how you learn stuff in, but man, they just take into it. Like I'm very technical on certain things on hand placement where I want your hips on this and that. And, and you're right. I've been a part of the slot T down at Navarro and, you know, our pass protection was very weak and, uh, that was one thing that was always hard to fix, you know, but we're, you know, mashing the ball every play. But, you know, and that's one thing I told with them is we're going to work on the finer things. And uh, that's something they bought into. Yeah, we want to, I mean, you know, we ran the ball 47 times last night and only threw it eight. But on those eight times we threw it, there wasn't any pressure. And they take pride in the things that we're going to do the most, but also take pride in the little things. And that's one thing I think our team has done is it's not just the the big stuff that we do all the time that we're taking pride in, we're taking pride in the little things, whether it's the one guy who gets to play special teams on kickoff coverage, or it's the one guy that has to block for a PAT extra point. You know, we, we take pride in those little things because we don't want to mess up because they know they're one play away from not being on the field and they don't want those things to uh, be taken from them. And, and those linemen, man, those eight guys, nine guys I get to see every day, you know, they take pride in those things and uh, it makes my job easier. So when I'm making adjustments, I can be like, Hey, 
you got to do this. Yeah, coach, I know I messed up. I'll get it fixed next time. That's a great attitude. Well, coach Brown, you know, my big thing is, yeah, I think y'all's mantra this year was one team, one Italy. You know, um, what does that mean to these players? I mean, you, you know, as a coaching staff, you're going to look at film and you can always pick little things here and there. But do y'all not just focus on the same thing pretty much every week with that team? Because there is so much buy-in in y'all's programs down there. It's just crazy. It's just a culture like you'd see at a Division two, Division three college. I'm, I'm going to take the opportunity talking about talking about that. Uh, that part of that is our, you know, we have a staff that's that's been together for four years, and and uh, and to brag on the two guys on here with me tonight, man, you know that you know, like Justin said, new guy in the block, and uh, we lost a good one in Coach Rowe, but uh, these two guys have come in and and just made the staff that much better with energy and and work ethic and 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 just you know being all in all the time. And, uh, you know, kids have a tendency to, to, to see when people truly care. And, you know, so many of our kids play multiple sports across the board for us. So it's, it's, it's sometimes it's not just about, you know, these guys know that when they're done, they're going to be chomping at the bit to get on the basketball court for Coach Guy and, and, and get going there and, and, and they'll be ready to go in the spring. And they took a lot of pride last year in winning district in all, in all three team sports, um, you know, so uh, it, it, it and as far as the staff goes, you know, Coach Cruz and I were in his room actually talking about that today. You know, all of us, you know, no matter what sport it is, you know, we're encouraging the kids, you know, to to do it all and 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 support each other and and uh, it 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 it. I think it helps. I think when you're a gladiator before you're a you know a football player or a baseball player or a basketball player, you know, just come to school, be a gladiator. We're two A school, and, uh, and we need to have all hands on deck if you can help. Yeah. Well, Coach Cruz, what does it mean for y'all to take this year's team? You know, you've had winning seasons before. You've had all these great teams. What does it mean to take this year's team? Because this is their own accomplishment. You know, what does it mean to take this year's team to that third round? Uh, it's huge. You know, I'm, I'm excited to be uh, practicing on Thanksgiving. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the entire team, the entire staff's led by, you know, I, in, in my opinion, the one of the best coaches and and in uh, the state of Texas, you know, he, uh, he's been there, done that. And uh, he knows the formula for success and kids are buying in. Like coach Brown said, uh, we're all working and, you know, we, we take it a game at a time and we know Crawford's really good. And, uh, you know, we, we, we have to do the little things right to be successful this week and uh, hopefully get another week of football. But right now we're, uh, we're definitely cherishing the, the Thanksgiving practices we're about to have and, you know, the Thanksgiving week, round three playoff game. We're about to play Friday. Well, Coach Moore, I can see you being one of these coaches. Everybody might think you're the strength and conditioning coach as fired up as you probably would get on the sideline. But, you know, that's the guy who's holding the head coach back is what I say in Texas high school football. But, no, I mean, who's that kid, though, that gets you pumped? You know, that everybody always talks about the coaches. These kids talk about the coaches to get them pumped. But who's that kid that – no matter what, right before y'all take the field, he just gets you pumped up. Man, there's and there's a few of them, honestly, but the one that always stands out with me, and you know, and it's a guy that, you know, he doesn't get a whole lot of credit for anything. He's always chomping at the bit to, you know, play defense for Coach Cruz, and I'm kind of selfish and uh, on him. And Coach Mosley's always asking me to use him. I'm like, man, I don't know. I kind of need this guy. And, He's that senior that anchors our offensive line, and that's uh, Omar De La Hoya. Like, that guy, man, just looking at him, and, and there's a picture floating around from our first game. And, you know, right before the picture, I just jumped his butt for, you know, blowing an easy assignment. And then, you know, the next five or six seconds, we're laughing. But that's that's our relationship, man. Like, he's one of those guys I can go to, uh, you know, when things aren't working right on the line or even the offense. But, hey, take control of that locker room and then – you know, and then every game or right before the game, he always cracks a joke or something. It just gets me, you know, hey, it's a ball game. You know, it's, you know, he's he's taking that tension off because I'm one of those, like, I'm so high strung. And, then, you know, that's one thing I volunteer to drive a bus because I just want to focus on that, get the kids there safely. But at the same time, if I got too much free time on my hand, you know, some of the kids pick it up. And Omar one time, he was like, hey, go, all right, I'm going to take this game and we're going to 
kick some butt and uh, go from there. And But he's always one of those guys I look at right before a game, you know, give him a little thought that we talked about. And he's that guy that gets me going just because he's so full of energy. And uh, But like I said, he's always that guy that's just going to be there and do things right. And, you know, and he, and he plays to the whistle. There's times I tell him, hey, slow down, slow down, easy, easy, because you're that close to getting a little yellow hanky on the field. And, and the other two coaches on the air can attest to that. Like, we're always, hey, control him, control him. Yep. But he's a guy for me. Oh, there ain't nothing wrong with that, man. But Coach Brown, you know, Coach Horn wanted him to be here tonight. Coach Cruz mentioned him a little bit there. Just talk about Coach Horn and just – what you know, how he handled I think he does one of the best jobs out there of handling, you know, dealing with kids, knows how to talk to them on multiple levels and actually reach them. Can you talk about that just a little bit? Yeah, it, it, the thing with the thing with Craig is he's he's just real with them. It's he's not it there's there's not he's not sugarcoating, you know, there's so many things going on in today's society where we, we, we tiptoe on eggshells and walk around people's feelings and you know, it, you know, kind of the same thing as, as Moore was getting at. You know, he, he can – because they know where he's coming from and they know he cares, you know, he, he can he can get on them and, and hold them accountable. And, you know, he's, he's just as concerned about them growing up and being productive members of society and the things they learn through athletics, the being on time and working with people and following directions as he is with winning football games. Uh, you know, and, and, and he's just – he's straight up with them all the time. And he doesn't care whether you're a freshman. He doesn't care whether you're a senior, and and uh, he doesn't care who your mama or your daddy is. You know, he's he's gonna he's gonna treat them all the same and hold them accountable. And and uh, uh, he's a great example for us as a staff, and he's a great example for our kids. Well, Coach Brown, we'll come back to you. Is there another player out there that just gets you completely fired up? You know what? Uh, uh, Jalen Barr crack, cracks me up. Uh, you know, Tootie is. Judy is all energy the whole game, and and uh, you know he just he never stops talking on the sidelines, and uh, you know he's he's just he's he he's a fun he's a fun kid to, he's a fun kid to, he's a fun kid to be around. Uh, awesome. You know, but we've got we've got a team full of you know uh, characters that that make it fun, and uh, make it enjoyable to come to come to practice every day. Well, Coach Cruz, we kind of talked about these two players right there. But there's – you know, Coach Brown was referring to, there's so many kids on the team. You know, just talk about that atmosphere with those kids. It seems like when the couple of times I've been able to see them, they're loose pretty much the entire game. There's no situation that seems to be too big for them. Uh, can you talk about that and how they keep that mentality? Uh, yes, sir. Man, uh, you know, we, we, we set an expectation – for them, uh, we expect them to be, you know, uh, take responsibility for for everything. We expect them to play well. We expect them to execute their assignment, talk to one another, yes sir, no sir. And, uh, they 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 meet those expectations, and they know if they don't throughout the week or on Friday night, um, you know, their 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 playing time might 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 suffer consequence, or um, you know, they'll get a put a butt chewing, and and then they'll uh, they'll get back out there and, and fix whatever. Um, they're doing, but they, they, they respond well to, uh, to coaching. Um, they rally around one another. Um, you know, we got, I mean, just on the defense side of the ball, you know, at linebacker, I got a freshman right next to a senior. And then on the defensive line, you got seniors next to juniors and in the secondary, you got sophomores, you got a freshman. I mean, they're, 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 they're all, you know, of different ages and different varsity experience. Um, but they know that our expectation is to, execute your assignment, play fast. And um, those that do get, get, get all the playing time. And um, uh, yeah, man, that those kids are awesome. It, it's one of the best group of kids that I, I've, uh, I've coached and they're all have different personalities, but they all, you know, they, they, they all know how to be dogs at times. Well, and coach uh, Brown, we got game Friday night, you know, can you give us the details. I, I, the only thing I've been able to see is a TBD on the location. We, but, we play it. We will play at two o'clock Friday in Alvarado. Well, that's so, awesome, man. Yes, sir. So, it's folks, guess what? I'm gonna tell you right now. There ain't no reason to go down there and catch that game early. That's a great <laughs> way to work off your Thanksgiving dinner. But y'all got some, uh, Coach Moore. Do y'all got something big planned for the boys for Thanksgiving practice or? 
uh, just every day, 9 a.m., getting ready. You know, this is a big for us. Uh, you know, uh, we always talk about it. You know, you win that third game, you know, then that's you – know, there's eight guys left that can – you know, you're up there with the big dogs, and, and that's one thing. That's our goal. You know, Cruz mentioned earlier, you know, it's a big goal to play on Thanksgiving, you know, have that week off of where you can focus on, you know, obviously the things that we're thankful for, the yeah. families and whatever, but the, you know, show those kids, you know, we're here for them for this week. And, you know, it's a, it's one of those experiences and, you know, and then you get to that fourth round, man, it's then like coach Horn always jokes about you're playing with house money at that point. Like no one yeah. expects you to get that far and you got that far and there's no, you know, what else you got to lose except give everything you got. And, uh, and that's one thing we stress. I know uh, my O-line's going to be happy. We're having a, a Friendsgiving on Wednesday after practice. So uh, I've, I've been lucky with, with some parents in that O-line group that help us out. But uh, that's one thing. We're going to take care of those fat boys uh, on Wednesday after practice, you know, show them some love. Uh, I'm sure somebody in Italy can make all these uh, – the team a few briskets, let me tell you. That wouldn't be a bad deal, <laughs> folks. If you got if you got time to smoke one between now and Wednesday – Let's get her done for them. But uh, Coach Brown, Coach Cruz, Coach Moore, thank you all for taking time out of your night. And uh, we wish you nothing but the best of luck. And uh, know you are going to do good things. Thank you, Coach. Make, thank you. Make it out to Alfredo Friday at 2 o'clock. Be there and be loud and be gold. Let's go, boys. Don't you belong.
Best burgers, fries, and pizza in Ellis County will stop by Doe City Pizza Burgers, where the ingredients are fresh every day and stacked up just the way you like. Them. Custom seasoned fries and burgers right off the grill on in house, fresh, homemade buns. So head on down to Doe City Pizza and Burgers, where everything there is dough. No City Beats and Burgers is located in Red Oak, Texas, right across from Red Oak High School. Make sure you come down and have the best burgers and service in Ellis County. All right, Ellis County, guess what? We're talking to the third round bound, Middle Othian Panthers, Coach Wendell, Marcus Mackmore, Joe Brock Cavender. Coach, uh, let's get right at it. How great were you feeling and your staff? I know there's more work to do, but you probably took about five minutes to at least enjoy the other night out in Abilene. You know, we had a good bus ride home. It was a lot of fun. Uh, the kids earned the, earned that win, and and uh, it, it was a lot of fun. It was a special moment for this group, special moment for the seniors. You don't get this far, and you don't, you don't have successful seasons if your seniors, it doesn't matter how many there are, haven't bought in and do a great job. So uh, very blessed and uh, thankful for this uh, opportunity to play this week during Thanksgiving. Always special. Heck yeah. Well, Marcus, think about this, okay? 84-88, the last time in 88, it was 33 years ago that the Panthers made it this far. How, how much does that mean to you and y'all's class on being the first group back to this level? Uh, it means a lot. 33 years, that's a long time. And really, I think being together played a big part of it. That's pretty good, man. Well, Coach, jump back up to you before we get to Brock. I mean, me and you were basically playing football still back when that, that was happening. You know? <laughs> that's right. That's right. But uh, just talk to everybody about what it means for a program to, you know, build and build and build and finally reach this kind of achievement. Yeah, I, I've, I've reflected a little bit upon that this, this, over this past weekend. And, you know, it takes grit, it takes character, it takes resiliency, and it takes determination to uh, to change something. And it doesn't happen overnight. And uh, the thing that uh, I reflected on yesterday evening was uh, th this isn't, you know, this is a special time and it's, it's the 2021 Middle Ocean Panthers time. But there's a lot of guys that have come through that locker room over the last five or six years that have help change that and, and point us in the right direction. And this isn't any one person. We get the benefit of the, uh, uh, the or the repercussions of that hard work. And, and this team has earned it. I don't want to take anything away from them. But there's other well, guys that have, that have set the tone and, and put us in a position to uh, do this. And, you know, I go back to those middle school coaches. I think when I, whenever I got here, the uh, teams weren't having success in the sub-varsity levels. 
And the past six years, I'm not sure we've had a team that hasn't had a winning record in the uh, lower levels, middle school levels. And, uh, you know, whenever they split, I guess Frank Seal had a couple, rough couple of last years. But we were we were winning ball games, so the kids expected to win when they came up here in ninth grade. And our ninth grade teams won and our JV teams won. So everybody on the in the locker room that suits out on Friday night knows what it feels like to win, expects to win. And I think that goes a long ways, and that doesn't just happen overnight either. Oh, and Brock, one of those reasons for winning is that offensive line has just been crushing people left and right. That counter that counter trap has just been killing it all year long. But just talk about the you five guys on that line and what it means to you. I mean, you got a fleet worth of running backs there at Midlothian, and they all have their own different abilities and do a great job. But just talk about the five of y'all and how y'all bonded and made this possible for the offense. Well, I mean, you know, me being like about the only person on the O-line this year with some real playing experience, you know, I think I, I've been able to kind of step up and kind of lead them in the direction that we need to go. And I think me and those four other guys have had a real good bonding experience this season. We've all come together and we know what's expected of us and we go out and we perform every Friday night. Well, and Marcus, you know, there's a lot of attention paid to that defensive line. They've been doing a great job. But the other night in the fourth quarter – they're down deep in y'all's territory, and you have blanket coverage on that throw back toward the pylon. I mean, just what's it like with those DBs? I know y'all have got a little bumps and bruises, but y'all have done an amazing job against some high-powered offenses this year. Yeah, uh, I think our secondary is really good, and we also have a nice bond. We've been together uh, for two years now, I think, and we're just tight, and uh, we practice every day really well, and uh, our focus is there. That's cool. Well, Coach, I don't want to miss out on somebody that I think has personally done one of the most amazing jobs this year, and that's Chad Regal. Um, you know, it's not always the big plays that you make. It's some of the plays that you make a good decision on. Can you talk about how he's become a leader on the team and, you know, what he's matured into so far? I think Chad's done a terrific job of taking what he's been given and, do, and taking the opportunity and done a good job. He makes good decisions. Last three games, and maybe one or two uh, decisions you'd like him to pitch the ball on, but overall it's graded out 85 or 90. And anytime you grade above 80 in the option game, then we feel like that's success. Uh, he protects the ball well. We feel like he's one of our better athletes and runs the ball well. And uh, just uh, does what he's asked to do. I think you got to give a lot of credit to uh, Mike Crumbaker for uh, developing him throughout the course of the season. He was very, very raw whenever we started the first game. And I think if you look, our defense played well against Brewer the first game of the season. Our defense played well against Brewer uh, the, at the end of the game and or at the end in the first round of the playoffs. And, and about the only difference was the play of the quarterback in that game. And it, it was about a seven or eight point swing, I think. And, and he was probably the difference. Or you could at least make the argument he was the difference. And, uh, but it's really a team game. And, and he could have success with that offensive line. And I'm telling you, the offensive line, especially Brock and Daniel Hesgesser had his best game of the uh, season last th uh, Friday night. Brock played the best, best he's played in a month. Uh, Kelvin, uh, uh, played as good at center, played as good as game as he's played all year. Uh, Tyler uh, Etheridge played very, very good at left tackle, for probably his best game in a month. And then probably the most consistent offensive lineman we've had this year is Cole Quigley. What a surprise. Uh, first year varsity player done a really, really good job. And then, you know, Stephen Limley, our defensive coordinator, just the magnificent, but he does a great job every year, but this, the, in my opinion, in the body of work that he's done with our defense this year, it's been great. We've got two great secondary coaches that match those coverages and, and put us in a position to win and, and, and confused love and Coronado the other night. Just really proud of our defense, really proud of our offense. And then our special teams the last two games have got, have been better. So it, it's, it's a fun time of year to be playing your best football, and, and we are playing our best football offensively, defensively, and special teams. And I'm just very, very proud of that. And I'm looking forward to the opportunity to compete this week. Well, I mean, I just want to throw this name out there. Vontae Jackson, part of that defensive secondary. Andrew Punter, I mean, yeah. previous game did such a good job keeping young good, you know, keeping that team, other team in bad field yeah. position on the punts against yeah. Brewer. I thought yeah. that was an amazing deal there. Huge two two punts against Brewer were big plays in the game. I think we had two punts the other night, and he puts it outside the number. And he has had that. I mean, those, those are stats that people don't see, but are difference in winning and losing football games. And he, he's he's had an incredible season as well. 
Well, Brock, how does the offensive line feel when you got fourth and, a, and four for a first down to seal the game and coach goes, let them big boys back out there? And then, and then Diego comes through. I mean, that's got to be – as a senior, that's got to be one of the most amazing feelings. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. I mean, in this offense, we know if you need four yards, you just run it behind us. We'll get that for you. There, There's no question about it. Well, I mean, Coach had a little bit of beef that time throwing uh, Tompkins out there with you. And, uh, I mean, how, how much weight was on that line at that point? I mean, you guys were just – About, like – 600 pounds at the least. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that just looked like a road plow coming or a buffet's nightmare, let me tell you. But, Marcus, talk about that D a little bit more. I mean, you've got everything going. You've got pressure on the quarterback. That was evident against Lovett Coronado with a couple of picks that y'all were able to get. You know, you've been great in coverage all year. You're coming up making big hits from the secondary. You've got good linebacker play with Coleman. Uh you know, just talk about that defense a little bit and where do y'all think y'all might be able to go with this because you held – Lovett Coronado has not been held that low this season and y'all just basically said no. Yeah, I think our defensive line is really good, especially our two interior guys. And then all of our linebackers, all seniors, very smart, I think. And I think we fit well in our secondary is, is legit. And, I mean, with everybody just doing their part, and everything just falls into place, and I think we're a very good defense. Very good, man. Very good. Well, coach, you got you got a game this Friday at seven o'clock, playing after Thanksgiving, at every coach's dream, right? In the Texas yeah. high school football, but you know you're going to play in the Gopher Bowl. A lot of historic games there as well. You know what are you wanting to see out of your team this week? You know every coach wants a little bit of improvement here or there, but is it just you know stick with the ground game, keep that going? You know, keep playing like – I mean, y'all played a pretty flawless game the other night. Um, talk about that for a sec. Well, what, what we've got to do this week is I just want us to play <coughs> – I want us to play as well as we possibly can, and then the chips will fall where they may. I think we have a really, really good team defense. I don't think you have any – you have some good players, but you don't have any real standout guys. Um, um, you know, there's no there's no D1. You know, I don't – there might be one a future D1 guy on that defense, but these guys are good football players that just do their job and play together. And I, I think what I've noticed over the last couple of weeks, the offense is doing the same thing. I think we're peaking at the right time. I think we're executing what we're asked to do. We know it's not flashy, and, and um, we'd love to we'd love to be in a position to throw it a little bit more. And, um, you know, they're – I felt like the other night there were going to be some opportunities, but at the same time, when you get up 21, nothing. And then two of those quarters that wind, I mean, people don't have West. I knew West Texas wind. I, I thought we'd have two quarters. We were going to be able to throw the ball. We threw one into the wind and it hung up there forever. And Tay came down with it. The, the wind impacted that, but we felt like we had a few, few shots. that might be good, and, uh, but it's just a, it's a team game. And, and we feel like, um, uh, we got an opportunity to really do something special on Friday night. We just, we just, I want us to play our best football. And the thing that I've noticed the last two weeks, the grit, the resiliency, the determination, the belief, all of those things that you hope that you have that you don't know until you've been tested, we've been tested and we have it. And I know that that's going to be out there on Friday night. So regardless of the outcome, I'm going to be proud of uh, what we put out there because I know the effort I'm going to get and I know that they're going to believe and I know that they're going to play as a team. Well, Marcus, I'm going to go both you and Joe Brock. You know, y'all are leaders on the team. You lead by example. I know both y'all don't really, you know, y'all aren't flashy just like coach, you know, in the offense. But, Marcus, what does it mean for you to be a Panther and to help lead this team to this level? Um, It means a lot. And I think being a Panther is you just got to take everything into account. Uh, it's prepared, Football prepares you for life and a Panther family, and, like, it's all just there. And it's just great to be a Panther. Awesome. What about you, Joe? I mean, I it just really shows you that all the work that we put in, it was all for something. It we Every day, whenever we put in that work, we went brick by brick. We just finally know that it finally gave us something. That's awesome, man. Well, Coach, we hope you go further. You know, we, we hope to keep this going for a while now, but uh, good luck Friday night. Take it one game at a time like I know you're going to. And uh, we thank you all for your time tonight, and we'll talk to you soon.
In Ellis County, we're always on the run. It's always good to know that someone's always there. Doesn't matter the time of day. With ATM Live, hours are always available. Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. You can always pull right up and talk to someone live for that personal service. Or stop by and visit with the friendly folks inside. Pinnacle Bank, not just another bank in Texas, but Texas in a bank. Member FDIC. Well, guess what, Ellis County? We got the running, and let me tell you, they can run. They can play D. They can shoot the three. Red Oak, Lady Hawks, Coach Eubanks, Breanne Davis, and Amaya Bowie. Coach, I'm going to start with you. We just talked about this a second ago. Tough schedule to start this thing out. You're going two and three right now, but you're playing some teams that are giving these girls an idea of what it's going to be like at the end of the season. You know, and y'all got y'all don't have the easiest of districts to play through either. So just talk out about this early season, this first third first season of the year is really getting y'all prepared for everything down the road. Yeah, it's it's been a a grind. Been playing some uh, serious competition. Uh, two tournaments that were major. Um, we haven't been able to get in these tournaments the last few years. And man, they present a problem. You're going to play a tough team every game. So that was a blessing for us. Uh, we started off in the Mavs Frisco tournament and we went one and four. Um, well, actually one and three. And plus we played Duncanville early on too. So that was, and we were one and four at that point. But like you said, we played tough teams. Uh, it was rough, uh, but we grew, got better. Came back the next week to the Allen tournament. Then you meet some super teams over there as well. Uh, we had a better go at it. Um, we were five and one in that tournament. So we made improvements, tremendous improvements. Uh, a lot of young girls got to grow. Like I said, they got big minutes in that first tournament. And uh, we got some players back this week. So it was a blessing. It helped and uh, just made some tremendous strides. So I'm proud of them. Well, Brianna, I know you're one of the big leaders on the team. You do amazing job, you know, run, kind of running that thing. But just, you know, everybody looks at the points. Talk about the defensive effort that your team has been putting forward thus far this year. I think y'all have actually become better at defense than the years past. Um, well, yeah, basically our offense runs on our defense. And when we play good defense, that's when our offense picks up because um, we're small, so we got to be scrappy. And that's something that we all enjoy doing, especially, boy, she loves trapping. <laughs> um, yeah, it's something we all enjoy and um, – it, it gives us energy, so that's what we need. Well, and Amaya, I mean, I'm so used to seeing you drive and go to the rim amongst the trees and just keep chopping them down with fouls all game long. Just talk about where you get that 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 attitude from. Well, um, my mom was like that too, so she always told me to keep my motor running. And uh, I think when I get to the free throw line, it gets me going. So I just try to be aggressive when I can so I can get myself going and get my teammates involved. Well, Coach, I know how important these two young ladies are to, you know, accomplish some goals this year as far as basketball goes. And I've had the chance to talk to them in the past and everything and watch them play a couple times every year. Just talk about them as people because uh, I think these are two excellent young ladies that you have on with us tonight. Yeah, they are special. Uh you know, it's sad that they're seniors um, because I depend on them for everything, you know, uh, just awesome young ladies. They, you know, last year, Anaya was my captain, but Bowie was kind of, you know, we used her as much as we used Anaya and Brianna. So uh, just because they both 
they've been like straight A students the whole time they've been at Red Oak. They've never been in trouble. They never have a bad day at practice. They're never uh, just, it's, it's, they've been amazing. They're incredible. Great kids. I love them. They know it. I'm sure they do. Well, Rihanna, I'm going to ask, come to you real quick. You know, one of the things last year, y'all had a few bus rides. You know, this year it's wide open. Y'all kind of have team dinners, everything else. How great is it just being back with the group again and having those special moments to bond? You know, to for y'all two as seniors to teach people what it is to be a Red Oak Hawk. Um, it's great, you know, going for things to go back to normal a little bit. Um, be able to go out to eat and be able to travel again. It's really fun. It's a fun way to bond with your teammates as well. Um, yeah, I enjoy it. I think we all do. <laughs> well, am I – Who's who, early on this year? Are y'all ain't letting no freshmen or sophomores or juniors come up and grab the ox cord, are you? No. Okay. Uh, All right. I'm always so, on it. It's me. Okay, that's and you. Everybody knows about the ox cord. <laughs> okay. So, do y'all play some stuff for Coach? Sometimes something that he he can have fun with. No. Mm-hmm. Well, Coach, do you ever know any of the lyrics to the songs? Nope, I can answer that for him. Nope, he don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm old school. I'm old school. Ain't, ain't really nothing wrong with that, man. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> well, Coach, we got a lot of football teams talking about, you know, we got two in the county right now that are going to get to play on, on uh, after Thanksgiving, which is always a big thing in football. But y'all have had your early season tournaments, and I believe y'all are playing this week on Tuesday night. Is that correct? You yes, know, with, the, with, with a big game against Mansfield Legacy – if I'm not incorrect on the team, but just talk about the excitement of playing before a holiday. And I know it's a big thing for the ladies, you know, having these little, these tournaments, which they ain't little, let's get that straight, but having these tournaments before the holidays and then kind of having those team dinners right before Thanksgiving, you know, the Friendsgiving deals and stuff like that. How much does that help build that camaraderie on that bench for the entire season? Uh, it's big. It's big. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, students are home now with their families. Uh, we're still in the gym grinding, you know, so that alone allows us to continue to bond. Uh, and it's that time of the year, you know, it's just uh, love in the air. So thanks for being here. Thanksgiving is we get to play basketball, you know, and these young ladies will get to do it a lot longer than most uh, other kids. So uh, it's just a, it's a blessing to be able to do what you like doing. Well, Brianna, I'm going to come to you right now. And, you know, on the 30th of November, right before December starts, you got your first home game. Okay. And that home cooking at Red Oak is normally really good with that student section. <laughs> How much does that get y'all motivated with that student section being so rowdy and loud? Oh, it does, because it gives us extra energy, too. And also, you want to play good in front of your friends, too. I mean, if oh, you yeah. don't, they're going to talk about you the next day. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a fun experience, though. So. It's awesome. Well, Amaya, what's one of the things that you've seen from this year's team that you th- that you personally think might have taken you all to another level thus far? Um, we got better on the defensive end, I feel like. Um, we added Deja which is, like, one of the top defenders in the state. And, like, if we build off her, everybody knows that um, she's going to set the tone on defense, that we all need to be in our gap. So, you know, it's still going to come eventually. So, I think we build – we did better on defense. We're getting better on defense. Awesome. Well, Coach, you know, you've had a look at some things. you played some really good teams. You know, I always say anytime you play a Duncanville team this early in the season – you know, I know the girls ain't going to like this, but it gives you enough film to work on for the whole year normally. But just talk about the little things you'd like to see them accomplish before December hits. Um, yeah. Uh, just concentrating on knowing where uh, our responsibilities lie, knowing our rotations, knowing our plays, um, just trying to get better every day, just trying to perfect uh, what we do. Uh, you never can perfect it, so it's just fun 
the process, trying to get there. So every day improving, uh, making free throws, conditioning, uh, the little things. Well, and Brianna, you know, I'm going to just go with you this one. You know, uh, you had somebody on the bench over there very close to you. Uh, you know, I always say, is it better this year? <laughs> some of the pressure since dad's got to go hang out with the boys or no way no way can it be better i lost a mastermind so it's no way possible it could be better she, oh, no, she but can I'm, lie to you okay <laughs> but i'm just gonna tell you brianna like i love seeing your dad warm up drill with y'all over the years okay <laughs> i mean he he does us big guys good i mean his ball handling skills and passing skills are amazing but no i mean Oh yeah, right there am I. But no, oh, I mean, oh yeah, hey, for every game. <laughs> but no, um, Rihanna, just talk about you know that one person on the team that maybe people don't know about yet, but you see good things coming from from them. You know, and they're probably going to be an essential person when y'all make try to make that playoff run, that district championship run. Ooh, I think it's like a couple of them. I think it's more than well, one. Well, don't out. <laughs> Um, I think they just gonna be a big piece for us. Um, Rylan, Courtney, uh, Dawson, she'll be a good, a good piece for us too. It's everybody, really. Everybody's needed. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, Amai, you know, you talked about playing that defense and getting everything there. We talked a little bit about the team right now, but talk about coach for a second. He had the opportunity to talk about y'all too. How much has coach meant to y'all? And you know, how does he make it special for y'all as players and encourage y'all throughout the season. Well, we all love him. So we all look him at look at him as a father figure. So we all listen to him whenever he's talking. Um, he makes the game so much easier. He keeps me level headed whenever I'm getting upset or whenever I'm having my little episodes. He always <laughs> keeps my head going. And I just we love him. That's awesome. Well, Coach, you got great, great ladies leading this team. You got, you know, like they said, you got a lot of good chess pieces to move around. Uh, what are your expectations from the team? Not from a win and loss standpoint this year. I know you, you, you want to give me some coach speak, you know, improve, improve, improve. But what was one thing that you would like this team to leave with this year, you know, and these two seniors to leave with that would be special from you to them? Um that they all and I and there's another senior as well yeah uh, that they they all go to college and play basketball that's what they want to do so I want them to be able to go to the highest level that they're capable of going to and be successful I mean I know basketball wise uh they're gonna be fine yeah uh, but you know I want them to get that degree uh, and come back and give back. That's awesome. Well, Brianna, I'm going I'm to start with you on this, okay? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to have a coach? And I want this answer for both y'all, but what does it mean to have a coach that doesn't necessarily just like, – don't get me wrong. I know this man wants to win, okay? Mm -hmm. But what does it mean to have a coach that cares just about, as much about your court performance as he does your future? Um, that means a lot because you know that he cares about us as people as well, not just as basketball players. And in return, it makes us want to play much harder, so much harder for him because we know he cares about us and he has our back. Awesome. And am I? Um, I feel like it like it gives us that energy, like it gives us that go to make us want to go do better. Um, basically make us want to do better. He loves us as people. So why don't we love him back and reward him with, W's and playing well for him. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. Well, coach, you know, I, it sounds like you got the pieces. It sounds like you got the will and determination this year. Um, what's that one thing that you might think that you're lacking right now? I mean, I know y'all can run and play defense with the best of them, but is there is there something that you feel like you're lacking? Is it, you know, just spacing, things like that? Anaya Johnson. Okay. 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 
Okay, I, I, no harm with that one. But <laughs> I mean, I mean uh, you know, it would that um, you know we're so used to having that. But we 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 have a uh, a baby Anaya. She'll come along before it's all over with. So size has been an issue, but we're growing with a couple of pieces that we'll get back. So. Um, I just think we just have to grind every day, try to get better. And, you know, we're, I think in the past, we've stressed what the end result was going to be. Uh, right now, we just want to have fun, man. Every day, it's a blessing to be here. So we're just going to have fun. Well, Brianna, with Thanksgiving coming up in just a couple of days. Okay, first question is, and it's going to go for both y'all. What's that favorite pie you want to have or favorite dessert? Sweet potato okay. pie. Do what? Sweet potato pie. Sweet potato pie. Sweet potato pie. Okay, we got sweet potato pie. But also, who is that special relative or somebody that just inspires you to go even further and be more than whatever you think you're possible of being? Rihanna? Um, my parents. Cause they sacrifice a lot for me and my siblings, so I want to be good for them. And I say, um, my mom and my dad. My dad passed away this past January, so yeah, I want to do well for him, show him that I'm um, still down here working for him and for my mom because she inspires me to keep going every day. That is awesome. I know he's only gonna be on your shoulder this whole season, girl. Let me tell you. Well, coach, want to thank you for getting these girls together for us. Spend a little bit of time. Hopefully, ladies, we're going to have you on a bunch this season. Okay? If Coach, let us do it. We're, we're going to have you on. But, Coach, just can't see where this team's going to go. Uh, first district game is December the 10th against Centennial, and that's a home game. You may miss some of these tournament games, folks, but they need that gym packed like it used to be. <laughs> I remember when that gym was packed. So make sure if you're a Hawks fan, get out there, support these ladies, support coach. You got the best of everything over there in Red Oak right now. And we just can't wait to see how far y'all go this year. In Ellis County, you know where to go for the best pizzas and burgers. Welcome to Doe City. How are you doing today? And the menu that allows you to have it just the way you like it. Great, friendly customer service. And all the toppings you can handle. So what do our customers say about Doe City? We come up here all the time, so we love the pizza and the burgers also. It's somewhere we can all come and have a good time with our friends and enjoy the good food that they have here. I love the fries. That it's um, cooked to order, so you're always going to get it fresh. Doe City is always a great place to come and hang out with your friends. Whether it's Tuesday or Friday night after a ball game in Ellis County, guess what? You can always make it over and have a little bit of delicious. It's delicious. Delicious. It's delicious. So come in or order out at Doe City Pizza and Burgers in Red Oak, Texas.